Yeah. Last time you came on the show, you said the following. Thank you, Piers. It's absolutely right that you and others should challenge us robustly. I know the reason you do it is because you want to do the best thing for the country, so don't stop being yourself. Uh, that was the last we saw of you for eight <laughs> months, and then the entire government boycotted us too. Um, how did you... How do you explain the boycott, given that you were so effusive about me challenging government ministers robustly? Well, it's good to be back, Piers, because you always provide robust challenge, and I'm looking forward to it on a whole range of issues. Um, so, better did, late than never. Did you agree with the boycott, personally? Um, uh, well, you know what my, uh, my mother always... Um, uh, said to me, defit uh, telt, which means that uh, uh, when you get good advice from your colleagues, follow it. Um, and that's what I've done. But now I'm oh, here. Well, hang on. So what, you're you saying both. it was good advice to boycott Good Morning Britain? Uh, no, I just did fit. I was telt. Well, so you, you, listened to, you let Dominic Cummings tell you what to do, really? Un unelected uh, official. No, I, I, um, I appear on the television programmes that uh, my colleagues in government think are right. And now that I'm here, I'm looking forward to um, answering uh, any questions that you both may have. Excellent. You don't understand why, given you're a journalist at heart, we found the suppression of free speech on our programme a little, well, irritating, particularly given well, it was uh, driven by a man who broke lockdown rules and caused un incalculable damage to the government's messaging. Well, I think, Piers, um, uh, uh, Good Morning Britain viewers probably know by now what your views are on, on, on these questions. Um, and they're robust and brilliantly expressed. Uh, but, again, today we have an opportunity to hear them once more. Um, and uh, they're okay. expressed with their usual pith and... Um, <laughs> OK, that's and enough safe. of that. Enough of that. Uh, enough. Flattery will literally get you nowhere. This is a big Scotch egg yes. I've got in my hands. Um, is that a substantial meal? Um, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's probably a starter. Um, but the, the, the broader and more serious point that uh, I, I think that uh, we need to establish is that uh, there are reasonable rules um, about hospitality which are there in order to keep us all safe. Um, and they specify uh, that in uh, certain areas, uh, if you are in a hospitality setting, in a uh, in a pub, um, that when you're ordering drinks, it needs to be alongside a substantial meal. Okay, but people and want definition... clarity. So, so, what is a substantial meal? Tell us. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a definition that's existed in law for, for years now. Um, if I'm taking my 16-year-old uh, son or 17-year-old daughter out to the pub, I can buy them um, an alcoholic drink, provided it's with a substantial meal. But what is um, a substantial that's... meal? What is it? Uh, well, it's been defined in law for years now. And, well, what uh, is that what, definition? What, what is it? You're, you're in charge of the law. Uh, well, the law was passed long before I ever became... Um, so you've MP, no idea what is a substantial meal, even though it's now the central plank of the government's policy for pubs and restaurants? Uh, well, uh, I think I'd say three things. Uh, we've uh, got hospitality settings, pubs, restaurants and others uh, that have been perfectly happy uh, for years now uh, to make sure that uh, 16 and 17-year-olds only have alcoholic drinks with substantial meals. Um, it's uh, a yeah, matter of common sense. Sorry, with respect, Mr Gove, if you're one of the gang of four that basically has been deciding all this stuff all year, um, and even you can't tell us what a substantial meal is, how is anybody supposed to know when they go to a restaurant or a pub what to order? Well, uh, you flatter me, uh, Piers, by putting me in, um, uh, in any uh, gang. Um, but, um, well, you are I, in the gang of four, aren't you? It's you, Rishi Sunak, Matt Hancock and the Prime Minister. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not in, uh, in any gang. But more to the point... Really? You don't all meet as a little, <laughs> little no. quartet? Cabal. Really? No, you never meet there is four of you? There is something called the Cabinet, um, um, and they oh. take appropriate decisions. We were led to believe it was point. just the, the, big, the big boys, the four of you. No, even though you flatter me, um, I think you're also being a little bit unfair to the hospitality sector, which has been able for years now... Yeah, but my uh, point to... is, even you, Michael Gove, don't know what a substantial meal is, and yet you want us to all go out and support this industry uh, and to abide by the rules. And again, once more, we have government ministers who are not able to tell us what their own rules are. Well, I would well, say yesterday, in fact, a government minister did tell us what a substantial meal was because George Eustace was speaking on a radio station and said it was a Scotch egg. Now, if I was running a pub and tonight at midnight I went into tier two, I would then take it as read that the government had told me I could serve a Scotch egg. You're now saying that that's not a substantial meal. So even the government isn't agreed. What a pub owner supposed to And it may to sound do? trivial, but actually it's really important to people. People want to go and have a meal, yes. but they want to know what the rules are. And pubs definitely need to know what the rules are, otherwise they get fined. Uh, well, they already do know what the rules are. 
um, um, and they have for, for years now. Um, now, I, I made a uh, jocular remark um, um, that my own preference when it comes to a substantial meal might be more than just a scotch egg, uh, but that's because I'm a, a hearty trencherman. Um, but the serious point is that pubs for years now have known uh, how to provide substantial meals. You have to eat the, the food. Uh, it's, uh, and in the same way, uh, uh, Piers, as uh, you were flattering me by putting me into a gang, I think you were being a little bit unfair on the hospitality sector. No, but do you have, here's, my point. Uh, uh, here's my point. Here's my point. Do you have Piers, to eat the food? Uh, I can think you the just way order, it works is that when you, you ask just the order question, order I answer two it, scotch sorry. eggs for everybody at the table and just not refuse to eat them? Do you have to eat them? Is the government mandating the eating of substantial meals? Uh, the government's relying on people's common sense, as they uh, have for years now, when we've uh, uh, asked people in pubs, uh, when they're serving alcoholic drinks to 16 and 17-year-olds, to make sure that that's accompanied uh, by a substantial meal. So George Eustace was wrong when he said it was a scotch egg. And pubs yeah. opening uh, in Tier 2 tomorrow should not just serve a, a scotch egg. Uh, they can serve whatever they, uh, uh, they choose to, provided it's in tune with uh, the, uh, uh, the appropriate rules, considering whatever tier there is. Where, where will you be spending Christmas, Mr Gove, and with how many people? Um, well, I'll probably be spending it at home. So how many would be there for Christmas lunch, for example, in the, in the Gove family? Um, well, that's something that I'm talking to my wife about um, in order to make sure that we can uh, have a, a safe and hopefully a festive Christmas. But you know, as well as we do, that we've arrived at a point at the end of this year, we were told to wait till the end of the year before we could make any real kind of overview uh, presumptions about how we'd handle the pandemic. This country has spent more money than almost any other comparable country. We've achieved the worst economic performance of pretty much any comparable country. And we had the worst death toll of any comparable country, including the worst death toll in the whole of Europe. Uh, how have we got to this place? I mean, you're one of the senior members of this government. Do you accept it has been an abject failure? No. Really? really? Yes. Which part of what I've just said is, is not a failure? Oh, well, I, I think, firstly, we're not through this yet. Uh, one well, of you the keep reasons... saying that because it buys you time. But the stats don't lie. We have had a disastrous economic performance this year, the whole year now, and we're reaching the end of the year. We've had a disastrous death toll. It's either your official number, which we know is not the real one. We believe, according to the Financial Times, the estimated COVID-related death toll is now heading over 70,000. To put it in context, Michael Gove, that is more than the entire number of civilians who died in the United Kingdom during the entirety of World War II. What part of this is not a disaster? Uh, well, it is the case that uh, countries across the globe, you're absolutely right, have been wrestling with a pandemic, which is... A disaster. Um, but uh, it's important to stress that we're not through this yet, and that's why uh, we're uh, moving out of lockdown but into a tiered system which is designed to reduce the rate of infection. Um, and I think it will be appropriate in due course uh, to have a reckoning and to look at how different countries uh, have responded. But uh, a few months ago, uh, people were making judgments about other European countries, saying how well they'd handled it. Um, and then in the, uh, in the face of a second wave, those judgments have had to be revised. Um, I'm not looking for uh, anyone to hand me any plaudits. What I'm more interested in is looking at the tough policy questions about how we can make sure that we deal with it. Well, given um, the, and I think that one of the most important things there... Given the scale... Sorry, Piers, just right, second. Hang on. One of the most important I've got things there is making sure that we get the argument for if tiering I can right. Just point, Sorry. Make this point to you. Given the scale of the economic mayhem that this country is already facing, how much worse is it going to be if we now crash out of the European Union with no deal? And the reason I ask you that is on the 10th of March in 2019, in a piece in the Daily Mail, urging people to get behind Theresa May's Brexit deal, you said, we didn't vote to leave without a deal. That wasn't the message of the campaign I helped lead. During that campaign, we said we should do a deal with the EU and be part of the network of free trade that covers all of Europe, from Iceland to Turkey. Leaving without a deal would not honour that commitment. It would undoubtedly cause economic turbulence. Almost everyone accepts that. If everyone accepts that it would cause economic turbulence, which is the very last thing this country needs right now, why are we even contemplating leaving without a deal? That was never what people signed up for when they voted Brexit. 
Uh, well, there are three things I'd say, Piers. The first is that um, I, I was writing that article before we did secure a deal, uh, before we secured the withdrawal agreement that put an end to some of the uncertainty about which we're concerned. Uh, the second thing is that people did vote uh, to take back control of our taxes, our borders and our waters, um, and that's what we aim to do. And the third thing is it takes two to tango. Um, we uh, have intensified the negotiation process, but it's important that the EU also uh, lives up to its responsibilities as well. William Hague says we are uh, closer to no deal than anyone will admit, former leader of the party. Do you agree? Uh, I think it's certainly the case that uh, there is a chance that we may not get a negotiated outcome. That's why it's important that business prepares for all eventualities. But I very much want a deal and I believe that we can secure one. As I say, we've already got the withdrawal agreement that uh, resolves a, a number of the issues that we needed to address um, uh, way back before uh, Boris became Prime Minister. Uh, but it is also the case that a free trade agreement with Europe would be a good thing. There are rumours circulating once again that you have aspirations to be Prime Minister and maybe plotting the uh, Julius Caesar scenario uh, with a metaphorical blade. Is that true? No. You have no desire to be Prime Minister? Uh, I'm very happy doing the job that I am. I mean, there are always um, uh, rumours, but... Um, well, sorry, so a simple question is, do you, want, do you want to one day be Prime Minister? No, I think on the whole, um, uh, I'm very, very happy doing the job that I am. That's not, I that's not a no, is it? Well, I think Boris is doing a brilliant job as Prime Minister. Really? Um, Nobody else does? Um, well, I, I think we'll have to, uh, to differ on that one, Piers. Well, you've seen we the polls. On, I mean, he's, 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 he's absolutely cratered his opinion poll ratings. Well, by, common, by common consent, even amongst Conservative media people, they've all been hammering him. You know the wolves are circling. You've in the past been chief wolf when it comes no. to taking down no. Boris. Uh, I'll just uh, ask uh, you one more time, simple question. Do you, do you have any desire to be Prime Minister? Or can you unequivocally say, right now, I never want to be Prime Minister? I don't want to be Prime Minister, Piers. Really? And, but, but, uh, yes, and more, more to the point. Um, okay. uh, I, love, I, loved your, I loved your vivid metaphors, but firstly, I think Boris is doing a good uh, job, okay. and uh, so do a majority of people in this country. Secondly, uh, if actually, we judge Actually, the majority things, of people do no, not no, think no, that, no, because all the polls... Well, you just said if, a if judge lie. Things, but the majority of people do not think that. In all the, poll, it at, no, in all the polls, the majority of people think he's doing a terrible job. You no, know I that. think... Uh, uh, certainly it's the case I think a majority of people do, but um, if, if we were going to judge uh, purely by passing opinion polls or, for that matter, television ratings, um, then people would say, well, you know, Piers, you're doing not, not that great a job. Well, actually, our ratings, ratings have doubled in given, five given years. Your they are, they've but I think that highs. you're doing a fantastic job So, actually, if you want to draw anyway, a comparison I make a judgment, between us and I, I, Boris Johnson, Piers, I'm very happy to do that. Piers, our poll I make a ratings are going on the basis that way. Of your Boris Johnson's are going that way. Anyway.